Hello everyone and welcome back to our island. The stage one of Bernland is just about to end so I wanted to give an update because a lot of people were asking me how the island is coming along. So let's start by taking a look at the map. So if you remember yellow was sky, orange is KOL and pink is DMC. That's the red camp and if we talk about the blue camp we have SYZ as the blue. The turquoise is actually KTA and light green is TGM. The secure clashes of course the blue camp and the red camp have their own secure clashes and of course we are going to be occupying all of them by the end of today. Now let's go to the south clash you can see that our red camp has been able to dominate this primarily. This is the area where actually we had a fungi buff so it shouldn't be too surprising that we were able to occupy it. A lot of battles happened in this area KTA was a pretty solid player that had actually made a lot of progress in the South Clash. It took us quite a long time to get them out of it. But of course, before phase one ended, we were successfully able to remove them. That being said, they were quite a deadly force. You can see that KOL got the wonder. We are right close by and you can see DMC actually made a way sort of close to the wonder just in case things got a little messy. Having them as a backup is definitely useful. You can see that there is still a little bit of a presence from SYZ that's still around. That being said, I believe they may be removed very soon because KOL is actually making way there as well. So that's the South Clash good for us in the red camp we are able to secure it if we go to the north clash you will notice that here there is tgm as well as syz and of course it is primarily occupied by the blue camp with the exception of some buildings that dmc was able to secure of course this is the place where the blue camp has the fungi advantage prolonged fights in this area would result in a little bit of a disadvantage to our camp similar to how prolonged fights in the south clash would be a disadvantage to the enemy camp so basically the north clash primarily belongs to the enemy camp and the south clash primarily belongs to our camp now let's go to the kill rankings for the alliance you can see that kta is all the way up there with almost 14 billion kills like i mentioned they were a major player in the south clash they actually fought really hard in the beginning they fought kol and sky both and afterwards they decided to focus primarily on sky next up is us sky we got about 11 and a half billion kills we fought both kta and syz syz only in one occasion kta several times next you can see dmc with about 10 billion kills these came from the north clash because that's where they were fighting and they were fighting primarily syz KOL with about 9 billion kills. Again, this is primarily because their main presence is in the South Clash. And of course, KTA eventually decided that it would be better to focus on one enemy and that would be Sky. So eventually KOL didn't get all that action after the first few days. SYZ, 7.7 .7 billion kills. Some of it is from the north, some of it is from the south. They did actually fight in both places, though I'd assume that a lot of their fighting might have been focused in the north. In the south, they only had one long battle against Sky. The rest of it is in the north. Finally, TGM, you can see them with only 1.5 billion kills. The reason for that is because DMC didn't fight against TGM much. As you can imagine, it made much more sense to focus on one enemy instead of focusing on both, especially in an area where we have a fungi disadvantage. Let's go to the player kills. And of course, that is something that a lot of people will find interesting. The DMC R5 is, of course, all the way at the top with 5.38 billion kills. Robot, very close behind with 5.34 billion kills. I'm sure nobody's shocked uh, by looking at these numbers. We did expect Robot and DKN to be all the way up there in the kill rankings because they are so powerful. The Wolf of KDA, number three with 3.76 billion kills. This is another very strong player. One of the toughest contenders that we fought against in the South Clash. Huge stats, high level insects and multiple high level insects. So there's a level 94 and then there's a level 89. And the third one is pretty high level as well, as far as I know. Basically a very solid player. 
Then there's Kabbalah from SYZ. This is also another very strong player. Also level 94 insect as well. And as you can see by the kills 2.7 billion. He also does back a major punch. The next CR are Sky members, Ukron with 2.1 billion kills, Silverstone with 1.9 billion kills, and Killer Ants with 1.5 billion kills. All three of them have made a very major impact, of course, with all the fighting that happened in the South Clash. After that comes KDA's Polar Bear, which is the leader of the clan and also a pretty strong one with 1.1 billion kills. And then number 9. Kevin from DMC, 883 million. And then number 10 is Vlad from Sky, 821 million kills. So that's the top 10 kill ranking that might be interesting for you to see. When we look at the Alliance influence, our camp is slightly higher in terms of Alliance influence as opposed to the enemy camp, which of course is a good sign because Alliance influence means you get higher buffs, which is going to be helpful in wars. Okay, let me share some of my personal reports and of course these are going to be interesting because these are going to be the ones that totally destroyed me. As you can see this is KDA's polar bear, the leader of the clan that I was referring to and you can see the huge stats that they have by 2.7k attack, 2.2k defense and of course 857% health. When referring to the attack about 400% of that attack is coming from fortresses Antil Enhancement and Desolate Rock. That means that their base attack is close to 2300%, which is pretty high. And here's a report from the Wolf. This is actually Wolf's Unit 1, which is the Guardian main unit. And you can see that I wasn't really able to do too much damage despite, you know, me having a Saharan Silver Ant. I expected more from you, Silver Ant. Anyhow, you can see that this player's Unit 1 is actually pretty solid as well. Level 89 Insect, and then you go down both of the Jungle Ants sitting at 7 star, and then there is Harry Panther at 8 star. And if you go into the stats, that's where things are going to get even more interesting. You can see 3000% attack, 3000% defense, and 1280% health. Well, you can't really blame my Saharan Silver Ant for not being able to perform when the difference in our stats is just so high. Not to mention 975 combat speed. Alright, and here is a pro unit report from the Wolf. So let's go and check it out. You can see even worse than the unit one, as you can imagine, 157,000. But let's look at what the unit is. Level 94 Insect Gladiator Mantis with a CC Helper. And then there's the Black Knight, which is at 7 star. Emerald Jewel Ant at 8 star, which is pretty cool. This was just recently released. And then Saharan Silver Ant at 7 star. Now, if you go and check out the stats, they may surprise you even more. About 3,000, 3,000% in the Guardian unit and 1,293% health. And then we go into the shooters and we see 3,400% attack, almost 2,900% defense and 1,154% health. If you compare the difference in our stats, you can see why my unit is pretty much not able to perform against his unit. There is just such a major difference in our stats as well as combat speed that my unit really can't perform that well against such a huge giant. Alright, now let's take a look at the SYZ's whale, Kabbalah. As you can expect, my unit wasn't able to do much here either, only 435,000 reduction in the enemy's power. And now let's take a look at what the unit looks like, a level 94 insect. So when you see a level 94 insect, you already know that this person spends a ton because it is not cheap to get a level 94 insect. You can see that these are both carrier insects, including the helper, which shows that this is a carrier main. And of course, you have an 8-star Egese, a 7-star CR, which is the new jungle carrier ant, which is actually pretty strong as well. And then an 8-star LB. So two highly offense-driven ants. And of course, then you have Egese. So I can see how this unit works well together. Now let's go to the stats. You can see that the stats are pretty high. 3,000% attack, 2,500% 
defense and 1014% health. Combat speed is pretty high as you can imagine with a carrier unit 960 and of course these stats really make my stats look bad. That being said my stats aren't actually that bad we're just comparing against people that are really strong. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> okay so those are the two very interesting players that I've fought. I know you guys probably want to see stats of Robot and DK Ant, and I probably can get them for you. But right now I haven't asked them to provide it, so we might need to wait a little bit before we do that. Somebody asked me about the protection time. The protection time for both of us is 16 to 24, which sort of works out to a 16 hour fight time, which is sort of interesting. It gives a higher opportunity for players to join and actually get some fight in. So in just about 20 hours, the middle clash is going to unlock and that's where a lot of the fun is going to begin because of course the North and South have buffs. The middle clash doesn't have any buffs and it also has the path to the tree. This means that a lot of exciting fights are waiting for us in the middle clash and of course we are all ready for it. Now some people also asked me for some videos of actual fights going on and I did try to record a few of them. That being said I only recorded the ones where we were actually winning but of course I do want to give you a little bit of a perspective. We weren't winning every single fight. We won some and we lost some. The other thing is that when we were losing recording videos was probably the last thing on my mind. So the only videos I do have is of the ones that we were actually doing well in. So that shouldn't give you the perspective that you know what it was just a clean slate and we won pretty much everything we did not there were tough battles the baron is pretty evenly matched so of course you know at different times different activities different number of people showing up there was times when we were doing very well there were times that the enemy was doing very well just that i only recorded the ones that we were doing really well now here you can see a fight that we had against KDA and this is when we were about to get their residence so before this a lot of fighting had already happened and essentially you can see that we are pretty much covering the residence and of course eventually we were able to get this residence as you can imagine since it's one of the things that was recorded it probably should not surprise you. But I think there's a lot that I want to share about this specific thing because people ask me to share certain strategies. So here's the thing. You can see that the residence was primarily surrounded by us and we're not necessarily touching the residence in most places, but we are touching it with only one tower. And the reason for this is because, well, first of all, if we decided to go all into the residence without doing this, KTA would have a lot of hills surrounding the residence and in the areas around it, and they could really really replenish their troops within the residence at a pretty fast pace. This of course creates a huge disadvantage when it comes to a residence fight because the march times from the residence are extremely high and that would mean that our players would be spending about 15 minutes per rally when of course that would force them into using unit 1, 2, 3 and of course if KTA is able to put in their pro units within the residence to defend the residence during that time we could have a lot of losses. So that's why we surrender surrounded it with towers but the towers are not connecting with their residents because if we did that they could try to break the baby tower so what we did is we left a little bit of space in between but if you take a close look you'll notice that this does limit the number of people that they can put close to the residents by a lot and that is exactly what we wanted to achieve and that's why we actually surrounded the residents like this because now they only have a few players that they can fit within the residence area but we can surround the whole residence and come in with a lot of activity as you saw a little earlier where I showed you the video of getting that residence. We were occupying the whole area around it. This of course made it a little tough for KTA to defend because now they had the 7-8 minute march times and we had much shorter march times. So basically, if you're facing a very strong opponent, you may have to do something like this because, well, you might as well use march times to your advantage in situations like this. And since I still have you here, I do want you to know that you can get between 10 to 35% bonus on in-game purchases in the Ants Underground Kingdom. All you need to do is follow the steps in the video that I'm sharing in the description below to find out how you can avail these amazing bonuses. There's also additional bonus days and for the month of May we're looking at 14th and 28th May where you get a 5% extra bonus from your base bonus. 
use the sky6 promo code and on that day your minimum bonus is going to be 15 percent so definitely don't miss that thank you so much for watching please like the video please subscribe to our channel and i hope to see you in the next one